Good afternoon and welcome back to the Double Duck Garage. This is video number 11 in my Rover K series engine rebuild. Uh, you might remember if you've seen the earlier videos, this started off back in sort of August, September time last year. So it's been a bit of a long term project. Uh, basically, I cooked the engine uh, completely, it kind of went bang. Um, coolant everywhere, spraying out, um, quite spectacular, but uh, probably not good for the poor guy behind me. Um, so I've ended up with the subframe now, complete refurbishment, shinned under the liners in the engine, uh, complete engine rebuild, and um, long and the short of it is now sat in the back of the car again, and um, ready for having everything connected to it. The first connector that I'm going to replace is for the throttle position sensor. Next I'll replace the connector for the idle air control valve. I actually put these two sensors on the wrong way around when I was building it in the garage and um, clipped in there and uh, I can now move on to the next job. Oh this by the way is the connector for the front lambda sensor. This part of the loom was covered in oil, so um, I've taken the old sticky tape off and wrapped it with proper loom tape. That's the gearbox reverse switch wires reconnected. So what I've done is I put a little bit of uh, loom tape around them uh, that will protect them and stop them coming apart accidentally. By the way, I just moved this big uh, fuel injectors connector, uh, just made it a little bit easier, rooted it uh, a little bit better over the top as you can see. I've moved that bit of the loom from there down to there. Um, really not happy with the way that was actually sitting over the top of the pipes. That was also nasty, dirty and oily, so I've taken the old sticky tape off and uh, put some proper loom tape on it. This is the alternator and oil sensors loom. Uh, just cable tied it there. This is the camshaft position sensor. The connector for it mounts on there. This is the crankshaft position sensor engine earth and there is a second earth cable here as well okay well i think that's been a very productive couple of hours uh the whole of the loom is in place with the exception of the four connectors uh two of which go to the oil pressure and temperature sensors and the others go to the alternator one job I've been wanting to do for quite a while is to rebuild the clutch slave cylinder. Uh, it's always seeped a little bit and the gear change has never been 100%. The slave cylinder brace that I put in quite a while back now definitely improved things, but I was still having a bit of a trouble, a bit of a problem selecting third gear sometimes. So I'm hoping that a rebuild of this will uh, get rid of that last gremlin. Okay, so this is my slave cylinder. I've given it a little bit of a clean and I've taken this plunger out. And so what I've got to do is I've got to find out how to get this plunger out. And a bit of a messy job, definitely need the gloves. Um, brake fluid everywhere already and uh, I've only just started. I've not done one of these before, but apparently sometimes there is a circlet that stops the uh, plunger from coming out. doesn't appear to have that on here. Um, I don't know if that means the plunger will just come out if I can get the right technique, or if there is something maybe further back restricting it. Um, as this is all one piece, I can't really see any easy way to get inside it unless it's something to do with uh, taking the bleed nipple out. Um, so I may actually undo that and have a look and see if there is anything visible through there. Um, but uh, somehow I suspect that it's just going to come out once I can get the right tool. There's not, but to be honest I didn't really think there would be. My first attempt involved wrapping some tape around the bolt and seeing if I could get enough friction to pull the plunger out. Obviously what I don't want to be doing is scratching the inside of the plunger, hence trying the tape. Unfortunately this failed. And then I remembered a trick that I've seen somewhere and it worked perfectly. So finger over that end, and lead nipples out, and a little bit of air, job done. Okay so the spring comes off of the end, and then it looks like that seal needs to come off as well. So I've taken the old seal off, the old seal sat like that, just took it off, just wedged it over there with a the screwdriver. Um, 
So I coated the seal in a little bit of uh, brake fluid. Hopefully help it go on nice and easily. I attached the spring to the plunger and now it's time for some cleaning and reassembly. The plunger went back into the cylinder very easily. Then I cleaned up the arm and put that back into the cylinder. It doesn't actually clip in anywhere, it's just held in place by the dust cover. And finally I replaced the bleed nipple. In theory that's job done. Um, if it works, potentially a really easy job. So um, yeah, let's um, go and stick it on the car and bleed the system and see what the clutch feels like. Here I'm removing the slave cylinder brace. Okay, attempt number two. Off camera, I've talked about the front and rear subframe bolts and uh, lifted the car up onto uh, axle stands. I can now fit the, um, the clutch flexible hose. I think it's time to put some fluid in it, bleed the system, check for leaks, and uh, see what the clutch feels like. It took a few seconds for fluid to come through the pipes and push all the air out, but it worked first time. I was quite excited to try the clutch and see what it felt like. I'm pleased to say the clutch feels really good. So all being well, that's job done. But one thing I do have to do is just check for leaks. Excellent, that's completely dry that one. That's looking good as well. Um, that's just a little bit of dirt that's come off of there but um, it's completely dry, it's definitely not fluid. So um, yeah, looking good. You can see how good this Sealy bleeding system is. Just um, fill it up with fuel, fuel. <laughs> that will do the clutch a lot of good. 
fill it up with fluid, pressurize it, and it actually pushes the fluid under pressure through the system. And uh, it's definitely the best way I've found of bleeding um, clutches, brakes, whatever. Um, I've only used it two or three times, but it's not let me down yet. It just works first time every time. Uh, no leaks whatsoever, clutch feels good, so uh, that's definitely job done. I think tomorrow, as I've got the pressure bleeder out already and it's full of fluid, I think I'll do the brakes as well, just get the moment done with. Uh, it's a little bit of a chore to get that, to clean that up, so uh, I think I'd rather clean it once rather than twice, because I'm lazy. <laughs> One new washer. Second new washer. And do that up by hand. So stating the obvious, that's the caliper done on one side. Um, I'm going to do the handbrake cable now. No idea where that video has gone. Anyway, the handbrake cable is joined to the caliper here. Normally there's a pin and a clip. I don't have these at the moment, so temporarily I put in an M6 bolt. I have also refitted the offside caliper. So now it's time to bleed the brakes. Even though it's only the back calipers that have been taken off, all four have to be bled because it's all one system. I'll do the rear ones first since they are farthest away from the master cylinder. This is the rear left, the near side. I actually ran into a slight problem with this leaking there. Um, what I've ended up doing is just putting a couple of cable ties on it just to pull the cap that way. This is actually a Draper kind of adapter. It's uh, definitely better than the CD one that I've also got, but you don't always get an absolutely 100% seal there. And I did find this before that uh, just putting a couple of cable ties on just to pull the adapter that way a little bit uh, makes, it, makes it seal properly. This is the Draper adapter, and this one is the CD one. This one's got the steps on it, and I found that this works much better, certainly on the um, MG uh, fluid reservoir. Now we've got a proper seal at the master cylinder reservoir. It's working perfectly, and you can see fluid is coming through and air being dispelled from the system. Next is the rear offside, the right-hand side. Now for the front offside. And finally, the front near side. I'm not too sure where all the bleed nipple dust covers are gone, so I shall add a set of those to the shopping list. I need to remove the excess brake fluid from the reservoir. And this is a tool that is incredibly useful, two or three quid from Amazon. So that's another job ticked off the list, but uh, unfortunately now I have the fun job of cleaning everything up. I think what I'm gonna do now is finish off the wiring loom. These is the oil temperature sensor and the other for the oil pressure. That's the alternator connections done. Now for the gear shift cables. There are two cables. This one will run underneath the engine and clip onto there. There is a mounting bracket 
Uh, I think it must go on today, so I'm going to go and grab that in a second. But first, I think I will do the one that will come through there and end up on here. I fitted the bracket for the second cable and clipped the cable onto the gear shift mechanism. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse.